Welcome to the Lotus Map the tutorial. In this episode, I want to talk about the creation of a spline and how to use it in Lotus. Of course, the first step is to create a spline in Blender or 3ds Max or whatever you want to use. This is quite easy and for the shortening of this tutorial, I don't want to show the process of creating this small plane. So I show you two screenshots where you can clearly see how this is going to be made. So in this tutorial, we start with the X3D file. Of course, everything you create as an object or spline or vehicle or whatever, something with a 3D mesh is saved as X3D. So you can import it into Lotus. First step is to click on objects and vehicles. And we obviously want to create or import a new object. The first thing you will notice is there are three type of splines. First thing is a standard spline. This category is for walls, fences, hatches and so on. The surface spline is the, well, I guess most used category. All splines which are saved as a surface spline will cut into the terrain. So obviously if you import a sidewalk or curbstone or whatever, you will choose the surface spline. The last thing is the marking spline. Obviously it's for street markings or other stuff. And the important thing is, in this episode, I want to create a small surface spline. So I click on surface spline. Most surface splines are category one. So we set a subcategory and the region and click on OK. And of course, we click on the button in the middle to import our X3D file. In this case, we use this X3D file. Of course, it should be in flat shading and not centered to the middle of the object. So as you can see here, there are some not good looking loops on this texture, but as always in this tutorial, I, I want to show the process creation and not the way to build the best looking spline or object or something like that. For going to the map editor, there are some settings you can use. Of course, you can choose the material. And as we know from the objects, you can use a complex with normal map and in ambient occlusion texture. If you want to use it, go to the go to the uh, object tutorial. First thing is we want to set the shininess 0.1 and also the brightness because the uh, stones does not really reflect the sun at all. And that's all we're gonna set here. Now we're gonna go to the general settings and there are some more settings we can check. So the first thing is we have a collisions box. Obviously the spline is centered and five meters long. Also we can add attach points and drawable textures like street names or something like that. As you can see here the length of a unit is five meters. You can change this value so you will get more corners in your spline if you decrease this value if you increase this value it's the other way around basically it depends on which radius is very common for your spline the second parameter is about the split count so you can choose if this spline gets cut up more than one time in within these five meters on a normal basis so of course if you choose a very small radius the spline gets cut up more often but you even can increase this value to get more cuts in your spline and more corners to get it round looking like. A very important thing are the edge parameters. You have edge X and edge Z. On the left side, there is the edge X parameter at minus 1.5 meters. On the other hand, on the other side, on the right side at 1.5. So the upwards direction are at zero. Obviously, these parameters get calculated automatically and for this very simple spline, it's always correct. If you get a very, very complex spline where you may choose these values on your own, you have to check it, but normally they are all right. You can also choose the additional snap point. So if you may have a road with two lanes, you can, you have one, let's say big snap point in the middle. So you can snap a spline of the same type as next. 
but you can also choose snap points for each lane. So if you want to split these lanes, you can do this very comfortably. And the last thing is the footprint type. You can choose between invisible sidewalk, driving surface, rail area and the building. Yeah, building is mostly not applicable for splines, but fun fact, you can create a building as a spline. For this, we choose rail area because the stones are usually placed within the rails. Okay, because we are done. An important thing for splines, if you want to test the length of the unit and the split count and so on, you have this preview spline property window where you can set your values as you want. So this default spline has a length of 20 meters and a radius of 50 meters. Yeah, you know this window from the last episode where I grabbed every entry of this window. As you may notice, there are only a few steps to set when creating a spline. So you don't usually need this much time as I did now. So we can click on the export button and choose, uh, let's say this preview picture. We get in the map editor and start our map. We now build a rail. First you have to choose a preset, click on your track. Go to properties and choose the right settings. Then go to splines and we're gonna use these stones. Click on new spline and of course we can use the length of the rail to get a good matching spline. And of course we're gonna set this height also to the spline. And now our rail is cut into the spline and the spline is cut into the terrain. We can check this in the wireframe mode as you can see here. It's all as we thought. Of course, we have some example splines for the other types. So let's get to the, let's get a wall. So there's a very important thing you should know about splines. And this is that you don't want to combine two of these spline types we uh, talked about before. So we created and imported a surface spline and now we're going to set a standard spline. I could use this attach point for the spline, but because we have a standard spline here and a surface spline as the sidewalk, you don't want to combine this. So better place your spline separate and you won't have any problems with that. There are some useful marking splines as this abrasion spline. So we set this to minus 0 0.15 because it's obviously on the, exactly on the road. Let's do something like that. And of course you can create a curve like this and so on. But keep in mind, as you see here, the alpha values will combine. So it's more likely to get a darker spot like this. But well, I guess it doesn't matter that much. Last thing we're going to show is the stop line. Of course, you want to stop in front of the crossing. A very important thing is that the stop line won't go further than the rails are. So that's all for this tutorial. As you see, there may change some things in the background, but the functions and features of the map editor won't change at all. There may be some optimizations, but yeah, as you see, most things are very the same. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you've learned something and I see you in the next video. Bye.